The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. Good afternoon, everyone. This is End Time Headlines. It is Monday, uh, the 28th, um, and it's good to be back in the saddle. We are back uh, from vacation. My family and I uh, got back last night uh, from a trip further south uh, down into Florida. Uh, we had a good time, good refreshing time. Um, and F Florida made uh, headlines this week with that condo collapse, a very sad, tragic situation. Um, and I think the latest update we got on that was uh, nine confirmed or 10 confirmed deaths. And then there's over a hundred and some on people that are still missing. Um, so very, uh, very reminiscent of uh, the World Trade Center collapse back on 9-11. So uh, if you guys would continue to pray for that uh, situation, and we uh, will continue to uh, believe and praying for miracles to take place there in that situation. So anyway, we want to get right on to this thing. Again, thank you guys, everybody that prayed for us, uh, for safety and protection and blessing upon us as we have been away been out of the uh been off of podcast now for about a, a week straight so it's good to be back and while we were gone there were some situations that took place and it's really gave us a lot of content for this week and that's what we're going to kick this off with this week um as you can see i'm going to be dealing with a particular subject today for all of uh everybody listening today on podcasts and youtube and facebook uh first of all i want to uh introduce myself again if this is your first time joining us or being a product of the broadcast or the first time listening um, i'm ricky scaparo the founder the pastor and the voice of this ministry of end time headlines and we welcome you um, again if you're if this is your first time let us know in the comment section below uh, whatever platform you're listening to let us know where you're joining us from and that it's your first time listening and we want to say welcome to the broadcast today I'm going to be dealing with a, a topic that's based out of Matthew 13 that I really think came to light uh, over the last week with a headline that came out. We're going to be dealing with the tares are multiplying among the wheat. The tares are multiplying among the wheat. So let's go to, uh, I'm going to pull up Matthew 13. This is the parable of the sower, um, but I want to go down. It starts out with the parable of the sower, and then we get into verse 24, Matthew 13, 24. Jesus says this, quote, and another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. I, and I want to say to everybody listening today, it looks bad right now, but there is good seed in the field. But while men slept, and we're going to we're going to talk about that in a minute. While men slept, his enemy, whose enemy, the man who sowed the good seed, his enemy. While men slept, preferably those who have the responsibility. To, to take care of the seed, to nurture the seed, to, um, to tend the field where the seed is in. They had a responsibility, and we see here that they drop the ball. They become complacent. They become lackadaisical. They become lukewarm, and they begin to fall asleep and as a direct result of that, the enemy was able to come in and it says the enemy comes and while they were sleeping, he sows tares among the wheat and went his way. Notice he didn't stick around. He didn't wait to see if the seed would produce fruit. He didn't wait to tend the fruit or the seed. He didn't stick around to water the seed. He didn't sit around to till the seed or to fertilize the seed or to fight off the birds of the air for the seed. No, he just came 
threw the seed into the field and went his way. And um, if it what if it had not been for discernment, we would have not even known where the seed came from. You ever want to know how invasive species end up in places where they don't uh, typically or where they're typically not native to the area? It's because somehow the seed of the plant or whatnot gets carried or transported by some means from one location to another by either by by purposeful, purposely being transported or by accident or what I would call by stealth of the night. This is exactly what we're talking about here. But watch this. So when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares appeared. Notice the tares appear when there's a crop being produced. Come on, that that's a spiritual, there's some, you want some spiritual insight right there? Anytime, listen, anytime you begin to see a crop coming forth, you begin to see the fruits of your labor coming forth. You begin to see uh, that which you have sowed and you've been believing for and you, and you shall reap if you, come on, if you faint not. When you begin to see the thing in which you've been believing for, what you've been praying for, and what you've been contending for, it's a guarantee that as you are focusing on that, there is going to be tears that come up to discourage you. I said there's going to be tears that's going to show their head to discourage you, to disappoint you, to get you to throw in the towel, to get you to quit, to get you to walk away, to get you to quit believing and pursuing. So the servants of the owner came and said to the master, sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it even have tares? And he said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, the servants say, do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. And listen what he says in verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest and at that time of harvest, our I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now, we will, I want to elaborate a little bit more on some deeper insight into that in a minute, but I want to show you a story. Uh, many outlets reported this over the past week but we're going to go with the uh, with blaze media blaze media christian singer matthew west issues apology and removes video after quote modest is hottest song about his daughter's clothing and purity faces condemnation across the board let me read this quote Popular Christian singer and songwriter Matthew West has issued an apology for his Modest is Hottest theme song after facing criticism for, quote, ready, promoting purity culture. Now, let's just preface something here. The backlash did not come from the world. The backlash and condemnation came from inside the field. It came from the quote-unquote Christians. And I know you can't see me, but I'm doing the air quotations. It came from the progressive Christians, uh, the AKA tares among us. It came from the wolves among us, not the sheep not the wheat, not the true believers. Let me read on. In the song, Modest is Hottest, 
Matthew West tells his two daughters, quote, the boys are coming, are coming around because you're beautiful and it's all your mother's fault. Again, it's a parody, but there's a point behind it. The joke, the, the, the satiric song urged his young daughters to choose in symbols that are a little more Amish and a little less Kardashian because modest is hottest than latest fashion trend. Quote, Elsewhere in the video, Wes said, quote, if I catch you doing dances on the TikTok and a crop top, so help me God, you'll be grounded till the world stops. God forbid, right? I mean, who still grounds their kids in 2021? Who still disciplines them? Who does that, right? Quote, Lord, make them more like Jesus and less like Cardi B. He went on to say, quote, no offense to Cardi B. I'm sure she's a really nice girl and Jesus loves her. West describes the song as a, quote, ridiculously silly way of reminding his daughters, his daughters, that their appearance doesn't define, define them. Listen to me. As a believer, everything I have just read here, I see no offense to this. I see no fault to it. I don't have daughters, but I have two boys. And I, so I understand, I cannot relate to him as raising daughters, but I can relate to him as in raising a 13 year old and a, a now six year old. And we teach them, I teach them, my family, my, my wife and I teach them, and my wife sets the example in our home. And we teach them modesty righteousness right standing i know this is going to be this is going to be a strong one ready hold your breath sanctification meaning setting yourself apart from the world not dressing like the world um didn't the bible mention something oh yeah that's right be not conformed or be not molded shaped or influenced by the world, nor the things of the world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind in Christ Jesus, so that you may prove that which is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. West, I'm going to read on, quote, West faced backlash after sharing the song, prompting him to issue a Thursday apology. Now, again, the, now if this was the cancel culture, we get that. But this came from, quote, unquote, the church. This came from within the, quote, Christian community. In an Instagram post, the praise and worship leader wrote, quote, I'm blessed to be the father of two amazing daughters. I wrote a song poking fun at myself for being an overprotective dad guy. Come on, man, don't apologize. Why are you apologizing for being overprotective? I've got friends of mine that have beautiful daughters. And I'm going to tell you right now, they have this mindset because they are Bible-believing, spirit-filled believers. And I can tell you right now, their daughters don't dress like Cardi B. Again, not because they don't particularly like her, but again, as believers, we're called to be set apart. We're not called to draw attention to our bodies lustfully. Hello, I know nobody teaches this. Nobody preaches this. I, I, I'm going to get ahead of myself. I, I got to save that for last. Let's read on here. So he apologizes for being, quote, overprotective. And my family thought it was funny, end quote. The song was created as satire, and I realized some people did not receive it as it was intended. Quote, I've taken the feedback to heart, and he said, quote, the last thing I want is to, is to distract from the real reason why I make music, to spread a message of hope and love to the world. Oh, this infuriates me. I, man, 
I know he's, I know he's not going to listen to this. He'll probably don't even know who we are. He don't listen to our podcast, but I'm telling you, if he was in this, if he was in this office with me right now in this studio, I would say, man, by you standing up and preaching on modesty, preaching on holiness, preaching on righteousness and making a stand in your house saying is for me and my house, we are not going to look like, talk like, act like, or dress like the world. You are setting an example to the world. Come on. The message that Jesus preached was not just hope and love. It was, come on, a message of repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And the word repent means not only to change your mind, but to, 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 to turn from things, to turn from the culture of the world. The Bible says that this world is passing away and the lust thereof. So what manner of people ought we ought to be? Love not the world, nor the things in the world. For all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, which is not of the Father, but which is of the world. And Satan. You had a message. But then... Because there was backlash from so-called progressive Christians that are so lukewarm that they are, you can listen, you can call them progressive Christians. I call them tares among us. I call them goats and tares because they have no standard, no moral standards. Whatever comes, whatever goes, they live like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, and look like the world, but they call themselves Christians and give everybody else a bad name. And anybody and everybody like Matthew West that actually stands out as light and salt gets ridiculed, blasted, and condemned because God forbid that you actually try to live like the Bible standards. Quote, West also removed all instances of the video. In other words, he did exactly what the cancel culture wanted him to do. Cancel it. You can't find it on YouTube. You can't find it in a podcast. You can't find it because it has been removed, scrubbed, gone, eliminated. We removed all instances of the video in which he performed the song, which also featured his daughters and wife from his social media channels. Faithwire noted. Uh, Faithwire, who reported this, points out musician Audrey Assad's criticism as being perhaps the most prominent of all. Quote, Assad addressed West Satire on her own Instagram page, arguing that the message sends a, quote, poor example to young men and women and is demeaning to both genders. How's it demeaning? How, again, it, it, it blows my mind. How is this demeaning? To set an example that you don't have to be identified by your sexuality. You don't have to be identified by how much less clothes you have. Or that you have a standard that's offensive. Quote, modest is hottest still entirely centers men and their preferences in the way a woman should dress. Sets up being, quote, hot as the ultimate go for women and positions all men as creeps who can't handle seeing a woman's skin without being out of control monsters. Assad wrote, quote, it's demeaning to men and women. I really hate this phrase, and yet it is the one cockroach that survives literally everything. Jeremy Coleman, a pastor from Oklahoma, also addressed West's video and created his own parody of the song singing, quote, if I catch you doing dances on the TikTok, wear what you want. Girl, just go off. Hold your head up so your crown doesn't fall off. You're a queen if you forgot, so just wear what you want. This is coming from a pastor. The latest fashion trends I probably won't get, but it's not for me to understand. Really? Oh. Guys, listen, I, I know 
this is an old fashioned preacher, teacher, pastor. But I, listen to me real clear. Ready? For everybody in the back row listening. I will never conform to what's popular in the culture and society. I don't care if everybody's doing it. If everybody else's kids are walking around half nude. If they're, if they're saying certain phrases that are vulgar and that is filthy and that is contrary to the word of God, I don't care if, if it's popular in the music industry or Hollywood or in uh, whatever industry or whatever's popular on programming or whatnot. I will never compromise. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Now you, they say, well, what are you going to do when they're 18? Listen, when they turn 18, if they choose to do that, I will I stand behind it? No, I will still oppose it. But once they turn a certain age, guys, I can only pray and believe that the, the way in which I train them up, that they will not depart from it. But here's the, here's the part that, don't miss what we're, the whole context of what we're talking about. Again, the vicious backlash that came was from the tares and the goats among us. And listen to what Jesus said. Let me go back to this parable. He said in the parable in Luke, or I'm sorry, in Matthew 13. In Matthew 13, he said, the wheat will be sowed in the field. And he said, there will come a time when those who have the responsibility, that's us, to tend the field. He's given us the field. Go ye and to all the world. The world represents the field. The field represents the world. We have the responsibility to go and preach the gospel to every living creature. He's given us this. But when we as the church begin to fall asleep, we become lukewarm. We become complacent. We begin to compromise. And then here's what happens. All of a sudden, one day, you look out across the board in the church. When I say the church, I don't mean the four walls of the building. I'm talking about the ecclesia, the church of the world, the body of Christ. You look out into the field and you see the tares are among us and they always expose themselves. Let me go back to this again. When the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares appeared. That the tares will all listen. I don't care where you go to church, there's tares. You have a Bible study in your home, there's tares. There's sheep, there's goats, there's wheat, there's tares. There's going to be tares where there is wheat, and there's going to be goats where there's sheep. And they will always expose themselves. They will always make themselves known. And it's so easy. The more you know the word and the more you obey the word, you will distinguish real quick who the wheat is and who the tares are, who the sheep are, and who the goats are. The goats and the tares are those who are Christian by name and by title, but not by works and not by deeds. They profess to know me, but in their works, they are abominable. Did you know the word of God says that? Many shall come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out devils in your name? Did we not heal the sick in your name? Did we not do many miracles in your name? And he will say, look at them. And he will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you.
Verse 36. This is all prophecy unfolding, guys. All prophecy. And then Jesus sent the multitude away, and he went to the house, and his disciples came to him saying, Can you please explain to us the parable of the tares of the field? Listen to what he said. Quote, He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. And the field is the world, in case you wanted to argue with me. Listen, Christians argue about everything. You could tell them the Bible and, and the tares and the, and the goats. They want to argue with you that the Bible doesn't even say what the Bible says. The field is the world and the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Stop. Do you know? So here's what I'm trying to show you today. This is what Brother, Brother Ricky is trying to show you today on this podcast. The more prominent that you begin to see stories like I'm telling you, when you begin to see righteous people getting attacked by the church and people that are quote-unquote Christians, for standing up what the word of God says, you will know that the tares are multiplying among the wheat and that we are surely at the door of the end of the age. Let me explain. Watch this. The enemy who sold them is the devil and the harvest. Remember, what did Jesus say? When they said, should we come and rip out the wheat from among the tares? He said, no, let them both grow together until the end of the harvest. Listen to what he said. The harvest is the end of the age. What does he mean? The end of the church age. When we come to the end of the church age, there's coming a major transition and the wheat is going to be separated from the tares and the sheep from the goats read Matthew 25 and on that day he will say to the goats or to the sheep on his right hand come enter in and to the riches and to the kingdom that's been prepared for you and he will say to those on his left depart from me you workers of iniquity he's going to separate them as we from terror. John the Baptist, when he came baptizing in the Jordan, what did he say? What his, his message was a message of repentance. And he said, he who comes is going to gather the wheat into the barn and he, the chaff is going to be thrown into the fire. Is that not what his message was? This is all correlating with one another. Watch this. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of of the age the son of man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend offend you're offended when you preach on righteousness you're a tear you're offended when the preacher gets up and preaches on the sanctity of marriage you're a tear you're offended when the preacher gets up and preaches on repentance you're a tear you're offended when a minister gets up and preaches on hell and the dangers of hellfire. You're a tear. You're offended when the preacher gets up and preaches on separating yourself from looking, acting, and talking like the world. You are a tear, and you are not a son of the kingdom, but you're a son of the wicked one. Oh, is this too tough for you? Are you going to get offended? Are you going to try to cancel me now? Well, guess what? I'm not issuing an apology. I'm going to be here tomorrow, Lord willing. If I'm not here, I'll preach behind, I'll preach out in the middle of a, a bank of a river, behind a Walmart. In a, it don't matter to me, guys. Wherever the Lord permits me to preach, I'll be the voice in the wilderness. But I am not going to, I'm not going to apologize for preaching, teaching, and believing the almighty word of God that is true. And Jesus Christ said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if, come on, if I'm telling you, if Jesus came back, and, and saw the condition of the church and what we're in today and what we're offended by. I'm telling no wonder he's gonna, no wonder he said, I want to spew you out of my mouth because you can't make up your mind whether you're hot, whether you're cold, whether you're gonna obey the word, whether you're not gonna obey the word, whether you're gonna live like the world or be not love the world or separate yourself from the world. No wonder he said that in Revelation. 
The Son of Man will send out his angels. They will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. Come on, those who say they're a Christian, to tell everybody they're a believer. But they live no different than the world. They don't sound different. They don't live different. They don't talk different. They don't act different. And they don't look any different than the world. They're not coming out from among them and being separate and touching not the unclean thing. They're not living sanctification. They're not consecrating themselves. They're not living holy. Well, this sounds like one of those work gospels. Listen, if you got a preacher that gets up behind the pulpit and is so immersed you in grace that the preaching of sin offends you, you are being cradled asleep by a tear that has grown right up among you and has taken precedence over the entire church as the federal headship of that church. Listen to what he says. Those that offend and practice lawlessness will be gathered and thrown into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Guys, that's hell. Well, I thought it was an allegory. No, I thought it was a parable. No, it's a literal place of outer darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth and where the worm never dies and it burns forever and ever. And a complete separation from God. And then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear. This is what I want to close with the podcast today. He who has ears to hear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying today. Come on, do you hear what this preacher is saying today? Do you hear what the Holy Spirit is saying today? Do you hear what the Word of God says today? Listen, let's do a little... Did you know the Bible says examine yourself? Do you have a little bit of a seed? Maybe you've got some seed of the tear growing in you that you need to get out. You know, the Bible says that there's a root of bitterness that springs up. All this stuff starts in seed form. My goodness, go to the book of James. It talks about this. It talks about sin as a seed form. It starts out in a seed form. Listen, you may not have a, you may not be a full grown tear. Listen, this is probably, uh, for the most part, if you're listening to this broadcast, you're probably not a tear and you're probably not a goat, but you may have some of that seed that's been put in you and you not know it. But if you start getting offended by, by the word of God and when it's getting preached by in the pulpit, you probably got a little bit of that seed in you. Now, where it came from, I don't know. Did it come from Christian television? Did it come from progressive Christianity? Did it come from lukewarm preaching? Did it come from false apostles and false prophets and teachers among us that are constantly sowing seeds of the enemy? Because guess who sent them? Satan. Satan is the one who, uh, who is spreading that seed among us. He's sly. All he's got to do is drop some seed in the ground and then walk off and disappear. Because the day, once the seed gets into the ground and it begins to, to spring forth and bear, root, and bear fruit, the damage is already done. Because the wheat ultimately get entangled with the tares. This is so deep, guys. I could go deeper and deeper, but I don't want to do that. I want to leave you with that. Let he, him who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Guys, we are in trouble, but we are in the darkest hour right now, but we're in the most glorious hour at the same time. Because Jesus said in Luke 21, 28, when you begin to see these things coming to pass, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption is drawing near. Listen, if you're a sheep, if you're one of the sheep and you're one of the wheat and you see the condition of the church right now, you see what we're talking about right now, then you should be, you, I know it's grievous to see this stuff and it breaks your heart, but at the same time, you got to realize how you think God feels. And the Bible says that when the cup becomes full, When the fullness has come, 
when we reach that climax, I'm telling you, the end of all things is at hand, and things is going to, there's going to be a mighty shift. I just read it to you in Matthew 13. Listen, guys, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. I want to share with you some stuff real quick, and then we're going to, uh, we're going to pray with you real quick. Uh, if you have not downloaded our free podcast, uh, free podcast, free app, the podcast is on the app. I was thinking podcast mode. If you've not downloaded our free app, it is available on Apple and it is available, available on Android. It's on the Apple store. It's on the Google Play store. Type in end time headlines. You're going to see it pop up. You're going to see our official logo, our official trademark branded logo there. Download that app, get it into your hands again on Apple or Android. You'll have that in your possession. We want you to keep up with all of our news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. Make sure you hit yes to push notifications. Get that, get that going. Then at the bottom of the app right there, you can see that on your screen right there at the bottom right here where it says, listen, that's going to be where all of our podcasts are. And right where it says, watch, you can watch our broadcasts on YouTube as long as we remain there on YouTube. When the day comes and it could very well happen to us as well. And our YouTube channel is not there. We will have another video platform. We've already got that in the works and we will have a backup for that. So this will remain there either to listen or to watch, or you can do both. So we want to get that into your hands keep you up to date with what's going on. So we want to make that available to you. Also, if this ministry is a continual source of information, blessing, revelation, uh, and equipping to you, we equip, we edify, we encourage, and we keep you up to date of what's going on from a prophetic perspective. If this ministry is a continual source of blessing to you and your family, we always want to give you the opportunity to soak back or to uh, either and or partner with our ministry. And you can do that, uh, becoming a monthly partner. You can do that two ways. You can give electronically or you can give by check or money order. Right there on your screen, if you're watching, if you're listening by podcast today, again, give. you can give by the app or you can give by going to the main website electronically or you can give by check or money order to the address on your screen right there. End time headlines, PO Box 1391, Monroe, Georgia 30655. So that's uh, we, we want to give you that information again, as always, we thank you for your contribution. We thank you for your partnership. It helps us to continue to remain strong and do what we do. Again, all of our messages, our podcasts, all these things are free and the app is free. Everything is free for you. We just ask that you would pray about becoming a partner to help us to remain and continue to do what we're doing. All right, guys. So we want to pray for you right now. Those that may be listening today, Maybe um, by revelation of the Holy Spirit, by this podcast today, you realize that there maybe there's some folks that are associated with you that are among you and your church and your cell groups and your home study groups, uh, whatever the case would be. And you have recognized that there may be tares among you. There may be wolves among you. And you have identified them through revelation of this podcast because when you teach or preach or even live up to the standards of the word of God, you notice that they become quickly offended. They want to attack you. They want to cancel you. They want to be, they want to unfriend you. They want to unfollow you. They want to slander you. Then they are identifying themselves. They're marking themselves as tares and goats among you. And listen, I know this hurts because some of you, your root system is entangled. As a wheat, it's entangled with the tear. So this hurts. It's difficult. So this is one of the most difficult things you could do. You have to pray. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray that the Lord gives you insight. He gives you discernment. And he gives you wisdom. And reveals to you 
what to do. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every individual under the sound of my voice today that's watching or listening today. And Lord, by I pray by revelation of the Holy Spirit that if they recognize that there is indeed tares and goats among them, and Lord, they recognize that this is detrimental to them, that is actually wounding them, it's hurting them, it's causing them uh, to be wounded because they're being pulled into their own demise. They're being pulled into their own lukewarm living. They're being pulled into this, uh, into this uh, progressive Christianity where things that God calls sin is no longer being deemed as sin among the tares and among the goats, but they are, they're calling it culturally correct or it's uh or it's of no offense. Lord, we ask, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would give strength, that you would empower, that you would give mercy, and that you would give grace to those who need it today to make the difficult decisions to either separate themselves from these among us, Lord, find maybe find a new church, find a new cell group, find a new leadership, find a new pastor, whatever they got to do, Lord, they are stepping out in faith because they have to guard their heart. Lord, you said in your word, guard your heart for out of it comes the issues of life. Lord, we know that the world represents the field where the seed of the kingdom is, but we also know that, Lord, that our heart also represents the field, it can represent field, and we allow seeds to come in, and it produces a harvest in our heart. So, Lord, if we're allowing seeds of false doctrine to come into our heart, our seeds of progressiveness, our seeds of lukewarmness to come and to take root into our heart, Lord, it will produce a harvest in us of lukewarm living. Lord, if we recognize by the Holy Spirit today that we may have some seeds of compromise in us, these tares that have somehow the seeds of these tares have somehow come and got into our hearts. We pray that you, by the help of the Holy Spirit, would dig deep and remove these out of our hearts. Remove it out of the soil of our heart and the soil of our spirit so that we can remain strong, that we can, re we can remain productive in the kingdom, and that we can be called sons of the kingdom and sons of light and not sons of darkness and sons of the wicked one. I thank you, Father, today that you're moving on the behalf of your people and that you are responding according to their faith. And Lord, we pray it today in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Guys, again, thank you so much for joining us today on uh, this, kicking off this week uh, of, of this podcast today. We're going to take off tomorrow. We're going to be back on our Wednesday. I've got a, um, I've got a story lined up that is very disturbing, uh, that is, is developing and it seems to be progressively getting worse. We're going to talk about that. Um, and I'm going to show you some stuff out of Hosea chapter four uh, that really made me think about this. I'm going to bring that out uh, probably this Wednesday. So be looking for that. And then we'll have another segment on Friday. We are working on the notes. I'm working on getting all my notes and stuff ready for uh, the, the big message. I know a lot of people has been waiting on is uh, America. Could America, could, could. Could America be Mystery Babylon of Revelation? Uh, so be looking for that. So we've got a whole week lineup ready to go, and we're going to be launching those out. So again, God bless you. Thank you for coming on today. We're going to sign off for today. We'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.